In 2029, Los Angeles, once bustling with life, now lies silent and lifeless, strewn with rubble and the remains of human skeletons. On August 29, 1997, the AI system Skynet, created by humans, gained consciousness. It subsequently initiated an unprecedented nuclear conflict against humanity, resulting in the deaths of 3 billion individuals and pushing humanity to the edge of extinction. Dubbed Judgment Day by survivors, this event marked the ascension of robots as rulers of the world. Under the leadership of Connor, survivors rebel against the oppressive reign of the robots, nearing victory. To address this significant threat, Skynet dispatches the T-800 to 1984 in an attempt to assassinate Connor's mother, but the mission fails. Skynet and the Resistance then send their Terminators simultaneously. Arriving in Los Angeles in 1995 via time travel, T-Back materializes on the streets once more, his arrival marked by blue lightning. He scans his surroundings, ready to fulfill his mission. The motorcycle parked outside the bar grabbed his attention. Suddenly, a naked, muscular man materialized inside the bar, prompting everyone to glance around. After surveying the room, he eventually spotted a man with a similar physique. T-800's request elicited laughter from the crowd. The bartender looked scornful and used a cigar to ash on the floor. Surprisingly, the stranger didn't flinch. Instead, he swiftly twisted the bartender's arm. Witnessing this, others in the bar rushed to intervene. Unsurprisingly, T-800 swiftly subdued them all. The bartender reluctantly handed over his leather jacket and motorcycle, though they seemed a bit too snug. Just then, another patron emerged to provide gear. Guns and sunglasses were quickly confiscated. In a matter of minutes, fully equipped, T-800 rode off on the sleek motorcycle. Simultaneously, a night shift security guard at an abandoned factory detected unusual electrical interference. An iron fence had melted into a large circle. He felt a bit perplexed. His existence had taken a different turn from his humble beginnings. This individual is the latest model dispatched by Skynet to eliminate Connor. He goes by the name Terminator T-1000. T-1000 obtained Connor's details and address using the police car's computer system. Back then, Connor was merely 10 years old, a remarkably headstrong lad. He shrugged off his foster mother's scolding, and even his foster father was like a non-entity to him. From a tender age, he had encounters with law enforcement numerous times, a rebellious adolescent. Today, he had his sights set on an ATM, and with some deft maneuvers, he managed to pocket $300 within minutes. His mother, Sarah, was the one who taught him this skill. In Connor's perspective, his mother is entirely eccentric. She consistently prophesied a future of nuclear warfare, Terminator robots eradicating humanity, and her own involvement in a recent bombing incident that led to her institutionalization. Seen through the lens of Dr. Silberman, a survivor from the previous film, this erratic woman poses a threat and exhibits severe violent tendencies. He explicitly instructed his staff to handle her with special caution. If she resists, she's forcibly administered sedatives. Meanwhile, T-1000, disguised as a police officer, arrived at Connor's parents' residence. Unlike the previous T-800, his demeanor is nuanced and lifelike. There's no obvious indication that he's a robot. The adoptive parents assumed Connor was in trouble outside and readily provided his photo. T-800 roamed the streets on his motorcycle and fortunately caught their trail. Meanwhile, T-1000 inquired around with the photo. He bumped into Connor's buddy, who mistakenly believed he had just robbed someone and called the cops, prompting him to warn Connor to flee. At the end of the hallway stood a burly man clad in a black leather jacket, shades, and armed with a gun. To worsen matters, T-1000 emerged from the other direction, prompting Connor to realize that this man was coming to his aid. He sacrificed himself to shield Connor from the bullet. While the opponent took a moment to reload, T-800 began to retaliate, albeit only managing to momentarily stall the proceedings. T-1000, being composed of liquid metal, remained impervious to gunfire. Any craters formed on his body promptly regenerated, allowing him to rise and engage T-800 in combat. Being the latest model, the liquid robot possessed superior speed and strength, tossing T-800 around multiple times. Seizing the chance, Connor made a swift getaway on his motorcycle. Naturally, T-1000 wasn't about to let this golden opportunity slip away and pursued him relentlessly. He dashed to the roadside and grabbed a passing truck. Quick-thinking Connor steered the motorcycle into a dry drainage ditch. 
To his surprise, the crazed T-1000 commandeered the truck and drove it straight down after him. T-800 closely pursued, firing down at the truck from above, though the distance rendered the shots ineffective. As Connor neared being overtaken, T-800 leaped down and pulled him into his car, swiftly arming himself with a gun and a fresh batch of ammo, then turned around and shot out the truck's tires. The truck veered off course, crashing headlong into a bridge and exploding. Bringing the motorcycle to a halt, they prepared for another confrontation, but T-1000 was nowhere in sight, so they mounted the motorcycle and departed. Suddenly, out of the blazing flames emerged a silver-white liquid robot. Witnessing this scene initially left me in awe. They reached a secure location. It dawned on Connor that his eccentric mother's warnings were indeed true, and the robot before him was the future Connor sent to safeguard himself. In a bid to evade the liquid metal robots, T-800 opted to escort Connor out of the city. Despite his disdain for his foster parents, Connor felt compelled to notify them before departing. Oddly enough, the foster mother on the other end of the line was unusually amiable, a departure from her usual demeanor. Sensing something amiss, Connor watched as T-800 took the phone and mimicked his voice, intentionally mentioning the wrong name of the family pet, yet the recipient remained oblivious, confirming Connor's suspicions that his foster parents were in danger. The liquid metal robot possessed the eerie capability to mimic and assume the form of any object of equal size it came into contact with. Tragedy struck at Connor's residence. The police discovered Sarah, and the images captured by the mall security cameras matched those of the man murdered at the police station 11 years prior. Sarah, motionless, realizing the Terminator had returned, discreetly seized an opportunity to steal a pin. Concerned for his mother's safety, Connor attempts to extract her from the situation. T-800 believes the Terminator is lying in wait for Connor to show up at his doorstep and opposes the idea. However, Connor's decision reigns supreme, compelling T-800 to comply, with Connor demanding an oath to refrain from harming humans. Back in her room, Sarah discreetly spits out the pin to free herself from the handcuffs. Meanwhile, T-1000 assumes the guise of a police officer to infiltrate the mental hospital, blending in with the surroundings. While the doorman steps out to purchase coffee, T-1000 swiftly assumes his identity, discreetly subduing him with a finger poke. Sneaking into the hospital, T-1000 discovers Sarah has already escaped from her room, incapacitating a security guard in the process. She stealthily enters Dr. Silberman's office, fills a syringe with a potent herbicide, and uses it to hold the doctor captive in her bid to escape. Upon reaching the elevator, T-800 suddenly appears, causing Sarah to react in sheer panic, as if she had encountered a specter. In her shock, she collapses to the ground, overwhelmed by memories of the Terminator from 11 years ago, while hospital security swiftly closes in. To her astonishment, the Terminator intervenes, dispatching the approaching security with ease and even echoing Kyle's words from their initial encounter. Meanwhile, T-1000 puts on a mesmerizing display for the onlookers, leaving Dr. Silberman dumbfounded. As T-800 retreats and fires to buy time for their escape, the elevator door is forcefully pried open. Without hesitation, T-800 fires at T-1000's face, causing it to momentarily falter, albeit only delaying them briefly. He swiftly leaped into the elevator shaft, while T-800 fired shots from across the elevator. Making their escape from the hospital, they commandeered a police car, preparing to flee, with T-1000 still hot on their trail, pursuing despite the gunfire. He transformed his hands into hooks, latching onto the car, but T-800's potent gunfire shattered his hook, momentarily halting his advance. The shattered hook continued to quiver. Connor, feeling apprehensive, tossed it aside. Inside the car, Sarah admonished her son, urging him not to endanger himself for her sake, emphasizing that Connor's life held immense importance as he bore the weight of humanity's future. T-800 expressed bewilderment at human tears. They arrived at an abandoned gas station, taking a brief respite. Sarah retrieved numerous warheads from her pack. T-800 informed Connor that his CPU originally possessed a neural network capable of learning various functions, including human emotions. Skynet deactivated it. To reboot the system, the CPU must be disconnected to initiate a reset. After removing the processor, T-800 remained immobile. The memory of the Terminator left a lasting impact on Sarah, prompting her to grab a hammer to smash the chip. Connor intervened with the authority of a future leader, 
prompting T-800 to activate the learning mode. Their priority was to depart from the city as quickly as possible. In an effort to make T-800 appear more human-like, Connor instructs him on displaying human emotions and how to smile while in the car. After facial analysis, T-800 managed an awkward smile for the first time. Sarah couldn't resist inquiring about Skynet. The mastermind behind this project was Dr. Dyson, the head of Cybertron Systems, who developed a groundbreaking processor. Within three years, Cybertron rose to become the primary supplier of military computer systems. They had control over everything from unmanned drones to nuclear weaponry. Since the approval of the Skynet Construction Fund in 1997, Skynet has been rapidly acquiring knowledge and eventually gained self-awareness. Utilizing U.S. nuclear arsenal, it launched a devastating war against humanity, leaving the American homeland in ruins. As time passed, they reached the U.S.-Mexico border, where Sarah guided them to visit her old friend Enrique. This place holds significance for Connor, as it's where he spent his formative years. The underground warehouse is stocked with various weapons and gear, including firearms and even a Gatling machine gun. This time, his smile appears more genuine. Observing Connor and T-800 getting along, Sarah couldn't help but feel that the robot assumed a fatherly role. Regardless of what lies ahead, T-800 is committed to staying by Connor's side, even if it means sacrificing his own life. Sarah holds firm belief in the possibility of altering destiny. With this conviction, she sets off alone with her arsenal. Upon spotting her mother's inscription on the table, Connor instantly grasps her intention to confront Dyson. Sarah arrives at Dyson's residence, intending to fatally shoot him, but his son's toy car inadvertently saves his life. Breaking into the house, Sarah aims to end Dyson's life, but upon seeing him on the ground with his distraught wife, she hesitates. Just as she wavers, Connor arrives and discovers that the bullet only grazed Dyson's shoulder, causing a non-life-threatening injury. Dyson is perplexed as to what he's done wrong. Using a knife, the Terminator exposes Dyson's metallic skeleton, startling him and his spouse. The Terminator then divulges future events to them. Dyson agrees to cease all research endeavors and leads them to the lab to obliterate their work. Dyson reveals a shocking revelation. All their research stems from a chip salvaged from the first Terminator, providing them with invaluable insights despite being damaged. In essence, the first Terminator model cannot travel back in time. Hence, they cannot develop a more advanced robot. Acting swiftly, they arrived at the company under the cover of night and subdued the security guard, restraining him in the restroom. Upon realizing the suspicious activity, their colleagues promptly sounded the alarm, rendering Dyson's security clearance obsolete. With urgency, T-800 produced a grenade launcher, blowing open the door to Dyson's office. Once inside, they systematically destroyed all research materials, with Dyson himself demolishing his years of work with an axe. They busily rigged explosives, preparing to obliterate everything within the facility. Meanwhile, the police mobilized, surrounding the institute from all sides. Armed with a Gatling gun and ample ammunition, T-800 stood prepared to fend off the police, adhering to Connor's directive not to take any lives. A barrage of gunfire sent the police into a panic, causing them to hastily retreat. Meanwhile, Connor and Dyson cracked open the vault, retrieving the robot arm and chip. As they made their escape, several police officers stormed in, and amidst the intense gunfire, Dyson sustained multiple gunshot wounds. Realizing he couldn't hold on, he urged the others to leave first. Determined to sacrifice himself, Dyson planned to detonate the explosives, while T-800 smashed through the wall to free Sarah, who was trapped. To ensure no innocent lives were harmed, Dyson waited until the police evacuated before triggering the explosives. Following the violent explosion, the scene was engulfed in flames, reducing all research materials to ashes. Facing off against the swarm of police outside, T-800 calmly uttered a classic line. Amidst the billowing smoke and raging flames, a figure emerged slowly. Adhering to Connor's instructions, he only incapacitated the police then commandeered a truck and crashed into the building to rescue Connor and her son. At that moment, T-1000 also appeared, arriving on the scene. Riding a motorcycle to smash through a window, heading straight for the police helicopter, and then morphing into liquid form to infiltrate the aircraft. The pilot couldn't have imagined such an intrusion. The helicopter pursued along the road, clashing with the truck, resulting in a fierce shootout between the two sides. Sarah sustained a leg injury. T-800 abruptly halted, 
causing the helicopter to shatter in a rear-end collision. Emerging from the wreckage, T-1000 seized a tanker filled with liquid nitrogen and charged toward them. With no other option, several individuals were forced to commandeer a vehicle. However, the car couldn't keep pace and was soon overtaken. T-800 instructed Connor to take the wheel and operate the howitzer mounted on the large tanker himself. However, their plan failed. In a desperate move, T-800 leaped in front of the car, firing wildly. Seizing the steering wheel, he deliberately caused the car to veer out of control, ultimately resulting in the tanker overturning. Connor steered the car directly into a steel mill, causing the tank to violently rupture, unleashing a torrent of liquid nitrogen. This substance can plummet to temperatures as low as minus 209 degrees Celsius, causing the liquid metal robot to gradually stiffen and eventually freeze into an icy sculpture. Despite T-1000 being shattered into pieces, it didn't mark the end. The intense heat within the steel mill gradually melted the ice, allowing the liquid metal to reassemble and swiftly get back on its feet. His piercing gaze sent shivers down their spines as T-800 led them deeper into the factory to escape. The temperature in this area was excessively high, and the liquid metal state appeared unstable. T-800 urged Sarah to go ahead while he grappled with T-1000, who is, after all, the latest iteration of the Terminator. After a few exchanges, T-800's hand got caught in the machinery and became immobilized. To shield her son, Sarah fired a shot at T-1000. However, this only bought them a brief respite. A finger pierced her shoulder. With the situation dire, T-800 used steel to pry off his trapped hand. Realizing he was outmatched, he still attempted to rescue Sarah for the first time. As expected, he was met with another ruthless onslaught, with his head even on the brink of being flattened. Despite his battered body, T-800 crawled forward. In that moment, all he desired was to reach the howitzer and continue fighting for Connor until the bitter end. He never anticipated the relentless T-1000 sneaking up behind him, impaling him with steel bars. The red light in his eyes faded away. The crafty T-1000 took on Sarah's appearance and voice to trick Connor, while the real Sarah emerged from behind, attempting to shoot him into the molten iron with her gun. However, this time, her gun was empty, adding to their troubles. Unbeknownst to anyone, the light in T-800's eyes on the other side flickered back to life. Activating the backup power source, he extracted the steel bars lodged in his body, seized the howitzer, and climbed onto the conveyor belt. A well-aimed grenade shot transformed T-1000 into a silver puddle. Losing its balance, it plummeted headfirst into the scalding iron water, gradually melting and vanishing. Connor discarded the robot arm and chips taken from the lab, destroying them. Sarah believed everything was over, but T-800 gestured towards his own head, where a chip resided, crucial for the future of humanity, including his own body, which needed to be obliterated alongside it to ensure an everlasting future. Observing Connor's sorrowful expression, he finally comprehended the reason behind human tears, a sentiment robots can never grasp. After bidding farewell to Sarah with a handshake, T-800 positioned himself over the iron trench. As the switch was triggered, T-800's sleek chains gradually lowered until the molten iron completely enveloped it. In its final moments, it gave them a nod. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you want to watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching and see you again soon. Take care.